We focus a second time on verse 9 of 1 Peter 4, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. So if you want to go into the details of what hospitality is and why without grumbling is so crucial, you can look at the other one on 1 Peter 4, 9. But I said there that there is a series of links with good deeds in 1 Peter and um, something else in Philippians and something else in Matthew that causes all kinds of lights to go on for me. And I want, I want to take you with me on this, on tracing out the link. So the question we're asking is, how is hospitality the light of the world? I'm getting that from from uh, 1 Peter 2.12 and Matthew 5.16. How is hospitality the light of the world? And the, the method that we're going to follow here, and I, I find it so fruitful, is to trace out links with similar words and similar ideas elsewhere in the letter and then outside the letter in the New Testament. So, Father, as we attempt now to link hospitality with the other good deeds in First Peter and how those are the light of the world that lead people to glorify you, give us your mind and your heart so that we become people of, of deep, radical hospitality without grumbling so that we shine like lights in a dark, grumbling world. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the question now I have is, when he says show hospitality to one another without grumbling, is this one of the good deeds that he has been so insistent on stressing? You remember the emphasis? Let's just quickly get a survey. 2.15, uh, this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. 2.20, if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. First Peter 3, 6, you women are Sarah's children, her children, if you do good and do not fear anything. 3, 11, let him uh, turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. 317, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. 419, therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. <laughs> so you can't, you can't but miss that Peter wants Christians to be known for doing good deeds, and he, ex he makes it explicit here in 2.12, which is, which is what triggers a, a relationship with something Jesus said. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles, 2.12. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so conduct honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, evildoers, so they're, they're saying at first what s jerks Christians are, they may see your good deeds and have a change of mind and heart and glorify God on the day of visitation. So, see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So, there's, there's a, a light, a light, spiritual light to be seen here in these good deeds that wakens the heart of unbelievers to change their minds from accusing us of being evildoers and causing them to, to see the glory of God and, and praise him and, and bless him. Now, that triggers um, Philippians 2, 14 to 15, because in Philippians 2, 14 and 15, this idea of not grumbling, not grumbling when we do our good deeds like hospitality is mentioned. Do all things, here we are, Philippians 2, 14, do all things, all things like hospitality 
or all kinds of good deeds, no matter how inconvenient or troublesome or risky they are, all things without grumbling or questioning. Now watch, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So, being a people who are free of grumbling while we live in a world that is crooked and twisted and dark with self-centered complaining, and oh, how dark the world is with self-centered complaining, and oh, how bad I feel when I find myself so often to be part of it, grumbling and complaining, when the Bible says, do all things without grumbling. And First Peter says, show hospitality without grumbling or complaining. And if we do this, it turns out that among these twisted and crooked people in a, in a dark generation, we shine as lights in the world. So being grumble-free in our good deeds is the light that shines. Now, is that what Jesus meant when he said, let your light, here we are in Matthew 5, so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and give glory to your Father. Is it the freedom from grumbling in the good deeds, that is the light. Lots of, lots of people, lots of unbelievers do good deeds. And, and they don't get any glory for God. So what, what is it that gets glory for God when Christians do their good deeds? So let's read the context. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of... Uh, all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice, rejoice, and be glad. That's the, that's the opposite of grumbling. Grumbling. That's the opposite of grumbling. So this is don't grumble when you're persecuted. Don't grumble when you're reviled. Don't grumble when they utter all kinds of evil against you. And how much more don't grumble when it's inconvenient to show hospitality. Because your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets. And then without a break, having said that, he now says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. So my argument is the light of the world that causes people to glorify our Father is not merely good works. It's good works done with joy in the face of inconvenience and suffering. That the world cannot imitate. They have no categories for understanding on their own terms people who would be reviled and persecuted and lied about and would still rejoice, or we could say, who show, show hospitality without grumbling or do all the other good deeds in First Peter without grumbling. So my conclusion is that this hospitality here is one of the many good deeds, which, according to chapter 2, verse 12, people see, they see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. And the reason they do is because when this grumble-free attitude is perceived, especially in the face of hardship and inconvenience or even risk and suffering. They don't have any categories, and therefore they're directed to the supernatural source of your freedom from grumbling. Oh God, we need your help in this day to do this.